Hello and welcome to the commentary track for episode one of Jurassic Park. I'm Joe Pinney, designer. I'm Jessica Lozano, the lead animator. I'm Daniel Farjong Herrera, uh, director. And I'm Lazar Levino as a sound designer. Dave Bogan, art director. Uh, Andrew Langley, one of the lead programmers. And Joe, let me do a little bit of writing on this, I think. Huh. And Mark Darren, uh, designer <clears throat> as well. <clears throat> Jurassic Park. All right. <gasps> nice tree. So, uh, so this... This uh, beginning with action, uh, playing with time, flashback was uh, not uh, the initial uh, design for it, but uh, it, it felt like it really needed to. We really needed to get a good punch in that uh, introduced everyone to the interface and also just had like introduction of the mystery, um, a good sort of uh, Barbasol can shout out and um, just something that uh, also introduces our main villain, the Troodon. I think it might have been like pitched where instead of the Barbasol can, I think she was going to look down at like this scrap of clothes that belonged to Miles Chadwick. And, uh, That's right. So that when you saw Miles later, you knew that that guy was going to get killed. But uh, I think it's better that it's probably the Barbasol can because I think that's what fans want to see. Nothing sells the games like the Barbasol. Yeah, <laughs> shaving cream. That's what the kids like. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know, it's like when the, when the game was first pitched to me, I think the scene was in there, so it's probably decided early on, but uh, it's a good way to start the episode, I think. I think originally we were going to start the episode inside the boat. Oh, really? Right. Yeah, it was going to be like nice and warm and cozy and comforting. We went back and forth a lot on those hallucination effects. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Part of our new engine effects too, and I think there used to be uh, you used to hear voices like in that dimly. You used to hear like little bits of oh, Oscar yeah. and uh, sort right. of flashbacks to the past, but uh, I'm not sure that ever quite worked. This is a great reveal here. We had a we had a lot of discussion about how much of the Trodon we were going to show initially. Um, <coughs> And we were very, very secretive about even saying the word Troodon. <laughs> yeah, how early on was it decided that the Troodon was going to be a main player in the series? Pretty early on. I think uh, that was one of the mainstays. We knew we wanted to have, like, sort of a key dinosaur dude. And, and he was a good uh, candidate. Actually, wh where it came from is Dan Connor's son was obsessed with the Troodon. Because the oh, Troodon right. introduces Dinosaur Train. A kids' show about dinosaurs, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, the Troodon is the engineer. You know, we spent a lot of time kind of debating about what is interesting about the Troodon. We had some ideas about. I, I think we had at one point talked about uh, like a skin camouflage type of type of effect, and decided that was maybe going a little bit too far. How many must survive this fall? I still don't know. Yeah. That, that was a tough <laughs> You should have seen it before. That is not brutal, broken severe bone. Severe yeah. spinal damage. She is indestructible. She is tough. There was a long time when the series was more, much more about geothermal power <laughs> and, uh, and volcanoes. Ah. Oh, that's right. And, uh, and the Troodon kind of uh, took the place of that. Or just became a much more attractive alternative. It's, uh, it is also amazing to consider how much Nima's been through before the sequence even happened, right? you know, on the timeline. So, uh, yeah, she's a tough woman. Yeah, we considered killing her off at one point in the series, but, uh, well, I guess she... I'm spoiling things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I think it Say was no said more. that we can't ever kill her by falling off a cliff because she can clearly survive that. Yes, yeah, so we had to kill her in a different way. Oh, she's spoiler. Yeah, it's a yeah, great she's, view. So... <laughs> She knows the land. You should probably talk about the, the choice of using Jerry Harding in a little spot. bit. Like, oh, yeah? How did that come into... Where did you get those? Uh, these? Where we put the like hard the back characters. in Harding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we wanted to have a Jurassic Park guy, but we also wanted to take the story past the movie. Because everyone gets evacuated and lives happily ever after. We wanted to have peril and death after that and see what happens I to the park and see what stuff? happens to the dinosaurs. No dinos. Jerry Harding's in the movie. He's around. the chief veterinarian. He's a little bit older and paunchier and has a little <laughs> bit more of a mustache in the movie. I don't know what happened to that. He shaved it off really swiftly. Worked out, hit the gym. <laughs> while he was dropping off uh, 
They're all female. After you got schooled oh, by, uh, hmm. by um, yes, <laughs> after yeah. he, he was like. <laughs> Well, this is before. Well, yeah, this is before he meets Ellie. So, That's right. well, he must have shaved it off. You know, it must have been like a fake mustache the whole time. They just put on for visitors. This is a little shy. I do think it's great that this sort of follows the formula of the movie, which is like the beginning. Um, there's a little bit of terror, and then a bit of the wonder about the dinosaurs, and then after the wonder and majesty of them is when it all becomes just about staying alive. And, when do we get to see that? Uh, yeah, like like many good horror I'm movies, you're sort of introduced to fights. something super terrifying, and then I said you get um, to check on? I you get going. sort of slowly you the, the character. You, you start to see the characters realizing what kind of danger. Well, give you some time to pack your stuff. The boat leaves throughout this game, like oh, Jerry's just kind of like, hmm, that's kind of weird. The lights aren't on. And then after a while, he's like, oh, I see. Dinosaurs are everywhere. Actually, it was more like a dominance display. The Jeep. It's one of the most iconic things for some reason. Come on, let's go. Yeah, and uh, we uh, we got a whole bunch of reference off of. No uh, fun on that boat when the waves are rough. That site called. I forget the actual. It's site like Jurassic name. Park Jeep or Jurassic. Right. I was surprised when we were looking at this to kind of going on the internet and finding that there are a lot of, of groups of people dedicated to kind of replicating this Jeep. And Multiple we websites that are just Jeep devoted. Just this Jeep. And then we rented the Jeep for the, the convention. We had the Jurassic Park Jeep, although I don't think anyone in this room got their Jeep. Oh, wait. Well, I don't know. I was a little jealous. Uh, and this is the introduction of Miles Chadwick, which I think is the most perfect name for this guy. And the nice cheesecake uh, intro of Nima, too. Just, uh... Who came with up with that name? Was that you, Andrew? I don't think so. There was a lot so, of bits it, of pieces. I, I know Miles was there. Chad was also there. I, I ended up combining them all into Miles Chadwick. Miles Chadwick, that was but, a uh, <laughs> Yeah. There was, a, there was quite a round of laughter when that name was produced <laughs> after we listened to his voice. And who is voiced by our composer, Jared Emerson Johnson. We need to go through a couple of takes on Miles to tone him down because he was just too much of an ass in the game. Yeah, he was, yeah. A, he was a super jerk. We just enjoyed his jerkiness so much. He just was a, a real yeah. pain in the ass. It's a fine line between writing a character who you are glad to see get killed but not making him so annoying that he makes the game not enjoyable. Yes. So hopefully right now he's okay, like Okay, I guess we're going balance. in after him. If anyone stops us, show him this this So getting a storm going. We need access um, passes to get past security. Damn or Telltale is a pretty big deal. <laughs> yeah, and actually this one <laughs> is pretty you. convincing. Um, one question I always had, I honestly don't know the answer to this question, but in the movie you see the video of the docs and you see the guy talking to Nedry on the phone. Mm -hmm. That's not any of these people, is it? Like, that's another no, worker. That no, yeah, that's somebody else. He's already on the boat. Okay, good. In cognac. <laughs> Relaxed. Oh, there's our guy, Barney. Yeah. There's Barney. There's a nice detail here where um, yes. his books ha are all, like, um, organic great. chemistry books Very or something. Well, I'm not sure entirely <laughs> why the... Uh, why the environment aren't reflected that, but we had all these theories. Yeah, we had all these theories about him, which makes it all the more tragic that it's like I stay here. He gets if he gets punched out later. I'm always like, so what happened to Barney? Did he get left behind and probably eaten, or did he get on the boat after he got knocked out by Nemo? That's uh, season two, Barney's tale. <laughs> right. And why is he interested in organic chemistry? What is he plotting? <laughs> Barney also likes Artie's uh, music show. Yes. <laughs> Oh, no, like I said, I Which you find out ship, later in one of the songs he listens to in episode three. I wonder if he likes it as much as maybe he just tolerates it, because it's the only thing on the radio. Barney and Miles' amusing chatter written by Dave Grossman himself. I thought you said... I love the way she... Uh, oh, that I do have to say that is the my most favorite inane dialogue in a video game ever is just listening to Barney that talk to Miles on the phone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know really why good. it's just so enjoyable because it's the most bureaucratic nonsense. But. Yeah. Hello there. Hi. Uh... Uh, we have passes. <laughs> we were giving him notes like, uh, you have to brainstorm it a little more. And, and like, I don't know, just, <laughs> just <laughs> where, where he was like trying to spell things. I mean, and he's I, like, I have some, uh, some essential. A as in uh, alligator and <laughs> yeah. F as in uh, ferret. I got to say, this is like the 
the first time I got really excited Go about ahead, working him. on the series because we I just come off Sam Max season three, which is like a typical Gilgamesh game, and I love the idea that Sorry, you can try you. to create this cover story oh, really? or you can just punch Why him in the face. Exactly? <laughs> like, I thought that was a that was a big change for us as a studio, and I thought that was kind of awesome. With a whole lot of new things too. I mean, we are, our our graphics have Let's changed go. a lot. I mean, it looks nothing like Maybe Santa Max. Yeah, there was sound all, design is hugely improved. It, there was all that, but for some reason, it didn't ring true to me until I read <laughs> Nima punches Barney in the face, and I was just like, ah. Oh. At least the ring. I've just been yeah. super impressed with these visuals. Oh, and, and getting into that kind of the mocap animation for the first time in our games, and all this stuff really just kind of pushed it up for me to the. To the Port where I, I first saw these environments and I got super excited for it. What? Step back, Mr. Chadwick. Hey, Dan Daniel had a huge what, contribution like to this scene I don't <laughs> with the uh, mechanic that we ended up with. Oh, here. The, the, yeah, the chopping thing. We yeah, went we, through many different versions of this. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's that's in the challenge of um, you know trying to come up with a whole new interface, especially that's that's both new in general and also new to us. It's like how do we make these things feel good and. Um, we went through a lot of different kinds of... Mm -hmm. Don't uh, show the legs. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also originally written a lot of Miles uh, sort of egging you on as you weren't doing well, but again, it bordered onto the Miles just being super irritating and yeah. not in a good way. Yeah, and, it, and the game was also hard to do, so it was mm -hmm. like, you fail, and he's like, ah, what are you doing? And yeah. you're like, oh, <laughs> stop you it. stupid idiot. <laughs> yeah. Learn how to yeah. chop. We wanted to keep, people out. Yeah, we wanted to keep like, everything really really super yeah, cinematic in the presentation and really keep it moving, it's, but still have just, no, just the, it, the player interactions it, be just, fun, and it was like zoom, more challenging you know, than it first seemed, so we, it took a while before we got something I think that felt right. Yeah, just making things interactive Ooh. that represent different oh, kinds what? of gameplay for us. Don't, don't worry about it. There's nothing, you know, dangerous in there. Just find, it's, find it's, a way through. It's really gratifying to see it and after you're, like, dealing with a blank canvas of, like, just figure out all sorts of new ways of doing things, you know? It's like, insert jung jungle hack mechanic here. Right. right. It's like, oh, yeah. what, is, what is that? No. This was direct uh, reference to the movie. I bet that means yes, uh, out, right? stick against Maybe. fence. Yeah. Yeah, Which sure. wouldn't actually prove anything. It doesn't really anything. make any sense at all. I know <laughs> this because I just built an electric fence. Ooh. You have to be touching the ground. Ah, so an ungrounded With stick. your shoes off, stick. also. And when, and when Dave Bogan says he built an electric oh. fence, he doesn't mean at home. He means around his desk here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I will I bring it into the office, I just assure you. Lead the way. Work done. I do like the idea that Miles was so confident. And it's like, yeah, yeah, it's off, go for it. And then she touches you, he's like, oh, thank God. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I like this reveal here, that's really nice. So, yeah, I mean, Dilophosaurus, such an iconic dinosaur from the first movie. I think it's great that that's the... What is it? The first, other than the Trodon, it's the first dinosaur we have our first... Uh, well, we already saw the Triceratops, too. Well, yeah, but they're they're all nice <laughs> and friendly and not the, that big of a deal. But these guys... I, I told you, it's a zoo. Not so nice or friendly. Animals. No. Come on, get moving. And we did we're debate moving. for a while whether or not we were going to have the did you hear uh, Dilo from the movie what? be a baby and the ones from our Nanny. from our game be Something like huge before. adult okay, okay. versions well, of them. We, we yeah. It was because of that line that Nedry says about your big brother... Yeah. And then we had a huge debate about whether or not that he was talking about whether that was a baby or if he was just referring to all other bigger dinosaurs. dinosaurs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I remember reading something that they can grow up to 13 feet tall. When they're adult yeah, I think that's like that. on the website. Yeah. Or 13 feet long, maybe. But I think yeah, it's like quite a bit be, larger than that. But it would be <laughs> weird to see it in the game since it wasn't in the movie. It right. seems like you you want to see what's in the movie. Well, that that yeah. was a I think a tricky balance for us all along was deciding to stay true to the movie or true to science. Um, there was a, a lot of artistry that went into the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park, and uh, since we are doing Jurassic Park the game, um, we often had to side with them. Yeah, At the same time, trying to balance and throw a lot of science in there, too, to, to kind of this be nice. This environment yeah, looks so good. Journal has some of that. And I remember, like, there was, I think Joe, it might have been Joe that printed out the scene from the movie of the Jeep with the headlights and put it on the wall. And one day I was, like, looking at the scene on my computer, and I looked up on the wall, and I was like, oh, my God, they look the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, the original version of uh, Nedry's corpse was a lot more... Um, 
Oh, that's that's questionable. <laughs> yeah, I would have bumped up our uh, ratings. And not I think I remember yeah, intestines rude. wrapped around the rearview mirror. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I long for the intestines. Oh, the, the that concept, wasn't the concept art was concept incredible. Art, yes. That was yeah. good old Jesse. Yeah. We said, don't hold back, Jesse. And he didn't. What the hell kind of zoo? And a zoo is, is this? Dan Connor's favorite mine. It, okay? <laughs> it, was, it was just some animal. We'll get the canister and then we're out of here. Is he wearing yellow tinted sunglasses at night? Sure. Of course he is, because he's Miles he Chadwick. And he's wearing <laughs> the Stavalis. <laughs> Only yeah, Miles Chadwick would do that. Money can buy. <laughs> And we went back and forth on that quite a bit, trying to find a brand of boots that would not pose a copyright problem. We also do that with Barbasol, right? With Barbasol, in that case, yeah, we came to a quick accommodation. They were happy for us to do it, and we were happy to do it. You know we can't go back empty-handed. Look there. And we got a crate of Barbasol cans. God knows what we would have done if we had not had the rights to Barbasol. Oh, that would have been tragic. We follow his well, Sarbaball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sarbaball. <laughs> Shavo. <laughs> it's like J.P. Penny. Yeah. Come on. Where'd you hide it? So this this whole thing changed a lot, I feel. Like, we we tried many different things here to try to make this feel really like you were really exploring and finding, tracking the game and all that sort of thing. Yeah, we wanted the search to be fairly, uh, oh, yeah. something you could dive into and get through pretty quickly, but have just enough substance to it to be interesting. Nima's uh, crouching pose there was based off of a uh, Scarlett Johansson pose. Oh, really? And, uh, I thought I recognized. <laughs> <laughs> when we were uh, mo-capping everybody oh, so to rude. get into that pose every time she needed to do it, it was the most hilarious thing ever. It's quite difficult pose to get into. As, as I watch this... Uh, Especially as watching it like a movie here, I can't help but air. picture the mocap actors that actually perform these movements. <laughs> yeah, we recognize her immediately. <clears throat> you didn't lose it That's down funny. Below. There's a there's an alternate universe where the jeep ended up uh, to where Total designs a game or this this yeah, part where the jeep ends up uh, strung up on the tree or yeah, yeah it was yeah dangling over your head and I, I back and forth on the winch line and oh. I think I was eagerly pitching that the corpse of Nedry should fall out and land on you and you have to struggle <laughs> to get out from under Nedry's corpse which that. was probably fairly a little too weakened at Bernie's but no way man <laughs> it's kind of like in Indiana Jones when that guy yeah, comes out of the is. wall yeah you're like uh, uh, get off me yeah. Right. I do always. I was never really clear on like what exactly happens to Nedry's corpse when the jeep comes down the hill. I guess he's just kind of sloshed into the floorboards, and they, and they're and they are more than willing to climb into a jeep with a dead corpse and drive to the docks. Yeah, they don't mind. Kind of there's, there's, when there's dinosaurs out, that yeah. changes the game a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I would try to at least kick him out. But you want to screw in, Jen? This is it. The crown jewels. They lose control of this. Yeah, and I think. Uh, Getting the canister to open and don't tell me you see we were the, the, the embryos inside was like super dinosaurs? important. Yeah. I don't understand. I love how they're just shaking those embryos like. <laughs> I like more. that line of miles. So he is recharging the batteries here, right? That's it. That's how we explain that the canister yeah. is able to last as long as it does. Yeah, the coolant is being re up there. I do like that one of the options. Originally, I think I wrote it. It was like one of the options was just there's a dinosaur behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there he is. He's so cute. And then it's uh, Mike Peretta doing the uh, effects for the Dylos bit. And One of the funny the things, things is we were animating the Dylos spitting, no and everybody was like, we need more spit motion on his neck. But when you look at the movie, they don't really do anything at all. Spit just emerges from their mouth. That's true. Okay, all right. All right, you know the plan. My boys are sending a boat. We bring them the canister. We get paid. Yeah, we spent untold amounts of time trying to make things as faithful to the movie as we could. Yeah, what is the, what are the rules with the dialo spit? Does it actually does it actually do anything, or is it just sort of supposed to blind you? Or I wonder how, I never well, if it, if it hits you directly in the eyes, yeah, it will blind you. But, but he and he Nedry had, had glasses, cool yellow glasses too. On, so. But I think it also poisoned you because when we were designing the sequence. 
I had the idea of at some point during uh, Nima's running to the jeep that she would get spit in the face with the uh, dialogue the dialo spit, spit and uh, then we would cover the button prompts with the, the spit so you yeah. couldn't see what they were. <laughs> but I was right, told right. that uh, the dialo spit is actually poison, so she would eventually die from that, so we couldn't do it. So Miles would eventually die anyway. Love that cut to hey, black on the jeep. Okay? Yeah, because I think sure I, strong enough to actually kill me. I think the hope was that you, you as a player, pretty much knew that Miles Chuck was, was going to die at some point. It was just kind of a matter of when. So we have a couple of fake yeah. outs to where the jeep rolls down the hill, and you're like, oh, is it going to run over him? Or you know, what's going to happen? And then I'm just really happy. Oh, by the way, that slap. I think. We came dangerously close to losing that. I remember because there was yeah, really. at one point where we're looking at our animation budget and it was like w- the slap was like one of those things where it's like, well, do we really need the slap? And I think several of us were just like an advocate because that's just so much about Nima's character that she will just slap a dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, gonna say before I'm just so happy that we got the chance to show Miles with dirt all over his face, mm. with his glasses missing. What? It's kind of spit. That's right. Oh, God. <clears throat> and then... Something uh, to give Nick Herman some credit for. Like, here is, he, a, is a Herman special. Yeah, he liked, he liked, uh, he really liked the idea of introducing the dinosaurs in an interesting way, so... Um, so uh, yeah. It was great we got a chance to show not just the one Dilo, but the, the group of Dilos. Yeah. That's all sort of according to the character. Uh, Nima's pose for holding the machete. I uh, googled machete and the Danny Trejo movie came up. (laughs) And uh, that's where her pose came from. Excellent. And Dave said that I should remember that for the commentary. (laughs) Well done. Here you go, guys. It's dinner time. There's a little (laughs) toned down uh, Spanish there. Say something much worse. Yeah, the original version is too so. Daniel was our Spanish consultant. <laughs> well, it's it's weird because in a lot of TV shows and stuff, like people just rattle on like, a bunch of uh, Spanish curse words, and because it's Spanish, like it just kind of really cares, I guess. Uh, that was severe oh. enough that we decided to change it. Yeah, I think there was one line. I don't remember which episode it was in. Maybe it was this or was it episode three where I showed the line to my wife and she was like, oh my God, you can't say that. <laughs> like, that's the most <laughs> offensive thing you could possibly say. Was this the first quick time sequence that we had laid out? Or was it the two um, yeah. one? This was the third one, I think. Yeah, we did the, uh, the Triceratops run for shelter stuff. That was the first thing we put together. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming up on yeah, I remember. I remember the first time I seen this, I was I was really stoked because... It was almost up until this point. I wasn't really truly convinced we could make a game with these kind of just sprinkled in there, and that there, that each different situation would actually work in a quick time. But I remember when I saw this one, we were just and I uh, it hit home. I felt bad a little bit for Nick Herman because this thing was still when we were trying to figure out how to put these things together. So I think when he inherited the scene, it was going to do almost a uh, cinematography. It was this scene was kind that of that shot mess. ever coming up. Uh, ah, that don't. was that was Nick. That was, right that was Nick totally Herman. Nick Herman. <laughs> inspiration. It's yeah. great. I'm glad we kept it. Yeah, yeah. Like I was a little nervous about it because it was like you don't see dinosaurs getting injured that much in the movies, but uh, God, that moment was so great. It's like you can't that was, not do that. That was yeah, one yeah, of the most like exciting things to light too, with all our new lighting tools. Yeah. My favorite moment for me as a lighter was like. Oh man, I really do get to show the red uh, taillights yeah. glowing on this dinosaur before it gets smushed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We can do that now. Just the little thing. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't die. Maybe he just gets injured. Oh, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> there was a lot of uh, thought that had to go into the Troodon sounds to make them super scary and, uh, and unique. Yeah, yeah where did the Troodon sounds come from? And, and uh, the Troodon sounds are a combination of a few different animals and then me kind of doing this throat click sound <laughs> yeah. that I then uh, reversed and kind of processed and played with until it sounded scary enough. Do you remember that nice. day when we got the Skywalker sound delivery? of all? Oh, the that was awesome. just Christmas. It was it was amazing to go through all that. And Amblin then, was really cool. They gave us just like tons and tons of stuff. Well, everything from the movie pretty much. And then we were able to put it in here. And I think we learned pretty early on how hardcore the fans were when we tried to use something that sounded slightly like T-Rex. 
And, right, uh, yeah, there was one trailer where we had before we got in the actual Felix Hamilton Skywalker, and yeah. yeah, everybody pointed out they ripped us that apart. it wasn't quite right. I, and that, I mean, they were totally outright, but then we got the right. I remember that the top YouTube comment was it sounds like Chewbacca taking a pill. <laughs> it wasn't that bad of a sound. <laughs> I thought somebody like, described it, it as it right. like a chicken right. or a but, hen but that was. <laughs> Amblin gave us all the sounds, and that Maybe sounds awesome. Yes. Yes. Thankfully. Yeah, but the showdown was interesting because it wasn't it's a, it's one a to real be heard treat before. working with That's Universal right. and, and kind of ambling on this. They were great. I'm sure it's just far. great That's advocates of the game we were making, them. and yeah. uh, oh, absolutely, we got a lot of good support. I just love the way this scene so, feels. Everything okay just at home? The sort of I mean, earnest conversation in the rain. Know. It's uh, I don't know. I but it also establishes. I think I don't know. I this is my take on the scene, but it also kind of establishes that Jerry is kind of a well-meaning parent but maybe not the well, best parent yes. because I mean some of the dialogue you can choose to where you can say like oh, your mom's overreacting or whatever uh-huh. well that's the uh, yes. parent only because uh, mom's not standing dad. right there yeah <laughs> I mean the, the dynamic of the, the divorced parents and uh, everything was like I think a lot of people are kind of know how that I know, feels. I know it's not easy. This scene, Your mom's very things under control. She gets dramatic. The awkwardness that can case, result from she has a pretty good reason. two parents that maybe know, aren't on the best of terms. Sweet. Yeah, Jerry tries. He tries. No, it's, it's, it's not just that not that great at it. <laughs> right, but then we have to set up, you know, later on in the series where he so has to get a bit more serious. I have to say the animations of Nima getting hit oh, by the truck were uh, the funniest. mo-capped by Dave Bogan impersonating oh God, the truck. No, no. Uh, yeah, and didn't yeah. she get slightly injured by you slamming into her? Aww. I thought there was a no. That injury. was something different. Allegedly, no, she, her neck was sore the next snowcap she was right. from getting. It's part of the job, though. She well, to get it took us by a guy pretending to be a G center. We were we were very. I did picky have a giant on... pad in front of me. Don't matter. forget to mention that. Yeah. <laughs> but it, <clears throat> we had the, fir- the first take was the best one though because. Just she totally one, just wasn't scary. expecting it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> every every retake we did after that just felt false. But uh, yeah, we just bracing. decided to do eight more takes. Right. Just you can't. <laughs> you, you cannot fake getting hit. You actually have to get hit and not expect it. And that's when the real performance comes. Here I come. She was uh, she was considering karate kicking me in the head. <laughs> <laughs> Should have mocked at that. We could have used that. <laughs> It turned it was, out to be a great move. That whole getting hit by the jeep was the most amazing time sinker you would never know. I love that. A lot of time. We had a lot of good adventures at MoCap. I think well, this whole sequence was probably the first thing we ever programmed to be on the prototype. Dad? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Time. She's going into shock, but I can handle it. This thing <laughs> to the next sequence was the first thing we put together to show it to them. Executive staff to say this is the game we're making. Yeah, so the stuff we were. Well, should game, we continue yeah. making this game? Well, it started <laughs> here, yes, and should. it went all the way up to the bunker. Yeah, yeah. But uh, gotcha. and it was voiced by Rhoda. Yeah, we had uh, Joe yes, Penny doing the Tim voice for Jay Harding, breaking with the tradition of Joe Penny usually doing the Tim wow, voice for women. <laughs> and That's right. Rhoda in finance doing uh, Jess, who actually did. A really good job. Like it's the okay. Temp voice, it's okay. Which I think yeah. is actually it's still in the Slow down a bit, hon. Sorry. Oh. I still hear Joe's lines when I play the scene. <laughs> That's kind oh, of it's gross. Gross. <laughs> Oh. I love that sound, too. <laughs> Remember those discussions whether it should make sound or not? It should keep her stable. I think this is also like a big moment for us. If it's a close up, it gets up. <laughs> the, way, the way that she, scene was shot was so different from anything we'd ever done. I don't and it was shot like a movie and not it. shooting it like an How adventure. How was she doing? And it was the well, most difficult okay. thing to For set now. up cameras in. It was a tiny jeep with three sense. people in it. And a moving jungle environment. So, uh, Nima being on Jerry's lap like Jess, that was Joe Penny's idea, where he wanted it to be uncomfortably intimate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, there was, there was always this running joke we were having She's that he was just kind of... She, um, right? Like sort of enamored by her, and she uh, was just totally unaware of it. You know? That that <laughs> Jess would keep coming back and be like, "Dad, yeah, what yeah, are like, you doing?" Like, you try to carry her. Just dad. Yeah, and there's just like horrible. Awkward I think situation. I think in the back of our minds, we all wanted them to end up together, and who knows, maybe they do at the end right. after the hmm. game. So well, I think and then a lot of people this thought this little one's name is Bikita. and Nima might end up together because they pick it so here? much, but. Season two. Uh, I love the reveal of the already. logo uh, as he opens the I've door. Got to get this critter back in her think enclosure. That's what Daniel's doing. Why showing the Jurassic Park thing? Yeah. That and the uh, the, the Triceratops horn going through it afterwards. Yeah. 
Oh, that yeah. is so cool. Symbolism. I think the sequence nice. pre stayed pretty much intact from the first way it was designed to execution. Musa pretty much. There was, Musa, huh? there was really changes that, that went on about how the, uh, the dialogue and demand would work, mm -hmm. and certainly the camera setups and everything, but design-wise, it stayed pretty well true to what was first kind of pitched on this. Mm -hmm. This environment was one of the first ones we built, Jonathan uh -huh. Banks built, and I think Locked it holds up. It's probably one of the best in the entire series. It was a lot of fun because uh, no this, this was another one See? of these, like, We're all right. We're fine. All right. You know, imagine that we have, you know, all the resources in the world make something awesome. She's pretty kind cute. Of thing. Huh? And She's we just had this open sort of I canvas. And the brainstorming so sessions warm. were a lot of fun. Like, there was people who, a lot of the cinematic artists okay. were sort of trying She's to start right. She's getting to know you. different Red scenarios. Paquita. Like, the Jeep getting in the water, and, like, flares were involved at some point. Okay. It was, uh, mm -hmm. Also, I don't know whose idea it was to get this girl out of the way. Now that you've met her up close, would you please go back to the car? Are you kidding me? I think that was awesome. New face. It really grounds it in reality. She'll be a lot easier to manage if you're in the car. Be warm. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Warm blooded. Bocat girl was actually getting a punching bag. It's warm. More tender. The same one that she got mashed with. So this is a baby. Triceratops, with the uh, with the pointy horns or whatever you want to call it. The yeah, the short, straight horns. Right, and uh, that subtle difference isn't very noticeable. What's um, in there? But Apart from the release lever for the gate, just maintenance ones stuff. Have uh, horns spools of a, cable for well, fence repairs, to, work boots, snow shovels. Snow shovels? What for? The, well, it's not for shoveling snow. Research as well, the oh. Triceratops and the... Torosaurus? Yeah, Torosaurus. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. if we still have that line Somewhere, somewhere in the, in the dialogue. I, I bet it's still there somewhere. Yeah. It moved around in a couple of different places yeah. throughout what we talked about, matching up See, kind of the, the modern the theories that the torosaurus and the triceratops were actually the, the same okay, animal at different uh, stages uh, of age. And that wasn't known when the Jurassic dogs? Park the movie was made, but we kind of put a nod to that in our game. Yeah, look for the we call it out somewhere. I don't know where the dialogue still shed. exists, but I'm pretty sure it's still in there. At some point, it was like we beat you over the head with it. But, <laughs> but well, even even the triceratops that you're looking okay, at there is an are. adolescent because it's got the spikier right. horns, kind of right. horny things on its frill, and uh, the adult one, which had to round them out more um, after having that conversation with Padian. Mm -hmm. And we also made the um, when they're all standing together, we, we played with the scale a little bit as well because. The babies aren't that small, and the adult isn't that huge. But um, it's so cute. yeah, they, it makes them look so much cuter and tiny. Yeah, it's hard to sell the oh, uh, cute little baby the when it's already that big. <laughs> There's no, yeah. no, no sense of scale, right? <clears throat> I think this was also the big testing ground for our navigation. Mm -hmm. yeah, Absolutely. Right. No one had any idea if that was going to be successful or not, and then. This was a very good test case because the environment was like the stations were kind of overlapping each other in certain ways, and um, you know it wasn't like right. you know Got four cardinal branch. like north south east west yeah. or anything. It was just kind of an a L shape kind of station layout. That um, and we used to have two stations, right? One for the trike and one for the gate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. 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 We, we consolidated it, and I think. I think the moment I knew it was kind of working is when we actually did either a playtest or the press event where they played it and nobody even commented on it, which to me meant it was a huge success. Right. It's like if you'd called it out where it was just like, oh yeah, I really noticed the navigation. I mean, the fact that nobody specifically Back mentioned it, I thought off. was like, well, that's good. Now I can. Now, initially, it. we had this, this new picture-in-picture -picture technology, and we were kind of challenged to use this... Uh, as almost kind of an in-game editing tool as opposed to navigation and just kind of switch the cameras. But the problem was you were switching cameras when nothing was happening over in that other camera. You could just switch around, but nothing would be happening for 75% of what you were looking at. So we kind of merged those two things, as camera switching and navigation, so that every time you did switch your camera, something was happening. Mm -hmm. It just never lets up that horn. That's a great <laughs> reveal right there. I know. Yeah. Alpha. Yeah, and remember there was a lot of discussion about whether this camera angle was too uh, video gamey. Oh, the flyby. The yes. flyby. Yeah. I, it, it is, but I feel like it's also so good that. 
That one looks huge. Another yeah, Nick Herman. Ah. Let's make the situation clear, too. <laughs> So this is like the first kind of half of our big quick original quick time event uh, experiment that I think Daniel figured out all of this without any animation support originally. Yeah. And I think when it was first described to me, I, was, I had no idea what anybody was talking about. I was like, what's going on? We, we had a lot of um, ideas that we followed through on like for the rest of the season and some that Maybe not so much. Like this, um, this whole idea of whether or not you rip off the uh, the column um, is irrelevant, but it makes you feel like you're doing something. Like a, he either like the horn knocks it off or you pull it off. But um. I remember originally those button prompts to pull the cables were like the hardest in the entire game. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they yeah, ever got right. toned down. This last oh, one was pretty hard. Them, so it's it's good. So Kudos on times. the sound for making the car horn just annoying yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah, that was oh my god. god. That was a big con- that was a big concern. Well, we we had the the when we plugged it in at first we had the the um, music from the soundtrack just as a temp oh, right. stuff. And uh, they were in different keys, and, and then Jared adjusted the, uh, the oh, key really? of, the, of the horn. And so that made, right. it made a difference. So huh? it sounded horrible. Oh. Like it was so annoying. And now it's just like you can hear it, but it's in the same key. I didn't even notice that. This was the first quick time event we developed, and I think it ended up pretty much staying pretty similar to what our first pass at it was. It's a little shorter than a little cleaner, a little original. I just love this introduction of the T Rex, like, and the, this whole like, like this fight is something that you know as soon as you get dinosaur toys, it's like the first thing you do. Is, right. is, is fight these two. And this uh, this insert here, I think, came from I want an Ankylosaurus, damn it. Everyone kept saying Triceratops and T Rex. That cutaway of the T Rex so roaring at the camera was Sean Finney because we put that in the trailer and it was so awesome in the trailer that we put it in the movie. That right there was a childhood fantasy. Right? That, yeah, is, that, awesome. that is what you want to see. Yeah. And Jerry Fallen. You don't really realize how big the Triceratops was until you size it up besides beside T-Rex. Yeah. Huge, 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 huge things. So my thoughts when I was creating the layout for the sequence was that the first half would kind of be Jerry and then to just have it get split so that Jess went off on her own because uh, it would just be really confusing and difficult for all three of them to be running into the gate at the same time, but I remember uh, we had some discussion about whether or not Jess should actually run, or if she should stay with her dad. She seemed like a little rebellious, though, so... I kind of like how, I don't know if this is totally intentional, uh, but in this first few action sequences, Jerry isn't quite the like badass action star like he's a little bit stiff and then by the end of the season like he's doing crazy physical <laughs> things and I kind of like to imagine that uh, after the final shot of the series he's like on the boat just rubbing Ben Gay into his joints <laughs> <laughs> yay okay, oh, he did alright oh. that was a oh. good one yeah I had fun coming up with all the different deaths in this sequence I just tried to come up with as many different ways someone could get killed. I wonder what that yeah. says about you as a person. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just didn't want them to get stepped on over no. and over and again. And I think so. uh, the deaths... I, I don't know if you guys anticipated the deaths being as big of a, yeah. I don't think anyone a draw did. as they were, but then when we showed it to the press for the first time, the reaction they got from like this one. Oh, oh, the oh, one where Jerry gets scared is my favorite, but the That's reaction the we got from the press on that, we were just like, I had not considered that death would be such an entertaining part of the game, but it, it ended up being. And well, as soon as I saw the, those layouts and the animations, I knew that they were going to be big in the in the. In the files when we're designing, there's just a lot of points yeah. where it says, and she dies, and she dies, and she dies. Right. Yeah. And then, then you guys, and then... Were there, any, were there any deaths? Make these decisions, and well, they were all really Well, originally in the uh, Triceratops T-Rex coming together what? death, I had made Jerry T-Rex. get impaled yes. by the horn yeah, right. and then fed into his <laughs> mouth. Yeah, I was trying to think, were there any <laughs> People other... People thought that was Sorry, too violent, were there so any we ended up just getting scooped. Were, were there any deaths that we had to tone down? I can't remember. There was that one. There was that um, one where he gets... Denied. 
skewered and what's left of it. My idea. And it really, the, even after we changed it, it doesn't look that much different. No. It, we were only worried about someone maybe taking a screenshot oh, yeah, and seeing yeah. that he was completely same impaled. Path. Yeah. But you still get the same impact from the way it was changed. Time for a dad moment. <laughs> This is our equivalent you know, getting of all these, the, all these moments is super important to, to the license. Yes. Yeah, this is our equivalent of them being uh, in yeah, the trees. Yeah, with the, I mean, it has to have these moments of of, of peacefulness and, and just the like family spotlighting possible, the relationship of the no, people. We, you know, we didn't want this to just be running around shooting Nothing can dinosaurs. Dad? Uh, I yes, think, sweetheart. you know, Joe, you did you know an awesome job of kind of keeping that balance of action and emotion. All throughout so the, the whole series. Awesome. It's yeah, you're not going to care about the uh, people getting killed if you don't uh, care about the people. Right. Yep. Yeah, and I was I was super stoked whenever we we would get like these moments reading well because uh, it's not easy. <laughs> but um, especially with people that aren't real. Yeah. I really liked making that sleeping pose for Jess. <laughs> that was just one I liked. It's a big gun. Here's a bit of foreshadowing. It's also nice that we get to see Jerry and Jess sort of for a while before like the dynamic starts changing with all the other characters. Because mm -hmm. after a while, like even when they're in the fight, there's people in the background going, "Oh snap!" you know, or whatever. Um, and it's good. It's good to have like a little bit of like, well, this is what their life was before, or this is what their relationship was like before. Those are some really nice looking water heating tanks. Back yeah, there. I guess it, like, when we got the awesome. we got the environment. Uh, it was almost indistinguishable from the concept art. Yeah. And this is the return of our favorite recurring character. Yes, <laughs> oh, want a whole spin -off series of last. Although I don't know, did, did it appear after episode two? I was trying to try to put it in three, but then the sound of Moku. Oh, something ran wow. over Moku Pa. Uh, <laughs> they got stuck <laughs> in the, the production schedule. Ran over Moku Pa. <laughs> and only was in episode two. Yeah. Whenever we brainstorm solutions to different problems, we'd just say, well, maybe Mokupa shows up and <laughs> saves the day. Yeah. Where's Mokupa? I, I remember we were trying to <laughs> figure out what I'm to do to with you. the... Uh, Good, nice spooky sounds there. Because right now, uh, Jerry just empties the gun, and we were trying to decide whether or not he could do anything else oh, with that. Like so what? at one point I suggested he just shoots Shoot. it, <laughs> and it would <laughs> hit the bird. But it would just be a trink dart, fall. although I imagine a trink dart and that bird would probably yeah, kill it. Yeah, dinosaur <laughs> tranquilizer. Yeah. Yeah. Or the fall would. This isn't supposed to happen. Ooh. Ouch. And that's because it's actually pretty easy, supposedly, for a trike horn to break. That's right. It's not a uh, devastatingly terrible injury. Yeah, the inside of those horns were actually hollow. How are we gonna get to the visitor? Really, there was originally Kevin uh, Payton had mentioned that video. there was originally the possibility that Lady it's Margaret might hack. reappear the at the end of the series. There's a playhead, by the way. So I insisted that that go in the game, and I, I put it in with Jake Rodkin's help <laughs> because uh, it's a loving homage to a, a error in the movie where you can clearly see the quick time player playing and loops. Somehow. <laughs> yeah, right. That's just, well, set. Um, the idea here is to have Miss Sorkin be a little bit of a mystery as well. And then you have to have Unix system. And originally I think people thought that the game was lagging when we just had it on the... Uh, yeah, the frame rate was very bad. Yeah. It was just... But that's oh, just, did, that was yeah, a concern that uh, we didn't want people thinking the engine or the, the game was performing poorly because of the choppiness of the Unix system. But you got to be true to the movie because it was super choppy in 1992 was. or whatever it was. Yeah. And ironically, it just takes a whole lot of work to make that effect happen. <laughs> so you should talk about the whole thing that used to go here where the whole, like, get them in the jeep and getting attacked. Oh, that's right. There was a section of the game that we pulled out where you would actually control the jeep and uh, drive them down the tour loop. 
And they were getting attacked by Allosaurs. They were getting attacked by Allosaurs. Allosaurs, yeah. You just kind of controlled them through this console system, right? Which was kind of horrifying. You were never driving the Jeep. No, it was kind of horrifying because you would watch them in the Jeep through the security monitor getting eaten. When you failed, it was... A little screen, yeah. And then it just goes to black or it goes to static. But really, I don't think that was not really needed, I think, because... No, it you want to get them to the business center to take out quick as possible. Hello? Somebody knows we're here. He is suspicious. You told me never ever hitchhike. Except when you're on an island full of dinosaurs. Come on, honey, let's get our patient. That's a good rule of thumb. Just, just keep talking to her. Tell her she so. needs to relax. She's got to rest. I thought of this puzzle. Good? That's right, this is a lasagna. <laughs> Hopefully it's actually fun. I have fun. I still struggle with it. <laughs> because it, clearly my Spanish is terrible. And the, the idea of using Spanish that's just like super basic, like... But misleading. Lapis, yeah, like, yeah. like a pencil and, and, you know, the biblioteca and all these, these like cheesy phrases you always learn in like French 101 or Spanish 101. La Resta's. This is another, so another, another, another Grossman be. writing job was coming up with all those little combinations of uh, ridiculous phrases. Anything where there was an opportunity for ridiculous content. It's like, Dave Grossman, help us become more yeah. ridiculous. I forgot that Jerry had those big scars on his forearm. Nobody yeah, knows yeah, where they're yeah, from. Like it's a tiger. It's awesome. Yeah. There's a tiger, right? Oh, we never sure. Played, we? I don't think it's ever clear. I don't know what it was from. I saw it on the, the 3D model when it came back for the first time. Yeah, it's funny. It was, it was a tiger. San Diego it was a tiger, it was actually. That's funny. I, I just, remember right. Tiger. I just assumed it was from like uh, I'd imagine he'd been at this park for a long time and like it had been. Hey, what's that? Earlier it happened. John Hammond and. That was Goodbye, actually motion captured and very difficult to do. Set down. Yes, I this was a little bit of a concern because we weren't sure how much blood patient. we were going to be allowed to show I'm to gonna get look a team around in, a little, but uh, okay. dinosaur okay, blood, I think, why is are you talking you know, like that? a different class than human blood. So, Someone's trying to I think, at one I think point the design was going to let you poke around in a dead raptor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you were going right. to try to find the walkie-talkie, I think, in the corpse in the of corpse. a dead raptor. <laughs> I was really amazed with the motion capture actors, actually, uh, to hop back in time a little bit. There's that scene where uh, Jerry is carrying Nima, running away from the dinosaurs, and he trips, lands on the ground, then picks up Nima and stands up and runs again. This guy, Kamasu, was that his name? Yeah. He did that take about ten times. And who was the one doing the tripping? I'm afraid it's been down here. That was just staged, right? I don't know. I thought I saw a video of you. Well, the thing is, it was holding out to pool noodles to represent the Triceratops. Approaching, yeah. Anyway, just watching that guy trip, running while holding someone and picking them back up. Again and device. running again. Whatever it is, it's incredible. Made me realize that I could never be a motion capture actor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, our, they go through hell. Our producer yeah. Kevin Boyle sent us all like Sounds a video right. on his rock? mobile phone it's that he took, and we were just like, the "Yes, there's, exactly. there's, there's exactly. a lot of creative uh, things going on." You don't have much time. Having having her slide on the ground was a super big challenge because <laughs> she kept like she kept landing just like flat on the cushion. Yeah, so we and layered two le two layers of plastic trash bags. Yeah, that's right. Nice, get some slippage. Slide on, lots of creative <sighs> problem solving. moment here. <laughs> Think about they, it. If only they just brought this in with them, they might have avoided this whole huh? problem. Who knew? <laughs> and maybe a gun, too. Who knew they'd need dinosaur tranquilizer? Later on in the series, sometimes when you see Jerry walking, he <laughs> kind of looks like a chimpanzee awesome. walking for some odd reason. So it turns out that was when I was in the mocap suit, and I was apparently I look like a chimpanzee when I walked. <laughs> I noticed those walks. <laughs> that's me. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Oh, that's left. Is it? Am I wrong, yeah, or, did, I or did we not kind of solve the question of how the T Rex got in there? Because I think early on, don't we pan over to see like half the wall missing? And yeah, yeah. Like there is that shredded plastic, and you see the uh, the exterior. There's the, the shot well, in the, come into the, the movie. Door. It is built in there, but like the movie, we don't really focus on it. 
So um, all these animations of Jess running back and forth between the columns were mo-capped by a guy. I'm okay. Because we were planning, we knew we were gonna reuse them in later episodes with mostly male characters. He did a surprisingly feminine performance. (laughs) There was a lot of discussion about the uh, symptoms of the Trodon venoms and what it takes to us to save people from it. Well, we also had to figure out the danger here. Get out of here! This was the first time where the failure doesn't really hinge on one of our main characters dying, but it hinges on this woman that you're not playing as dying. So we added this this timer icon to indicate, you know, your time's running out, you need to save this person. Yeah, this was redesigned, I think, multiple times to try and figure out the best way to keep it so that Jerry couldn't come help Jess. The way this is shot, I think, is also really, really cool. Under the balcony angle is gorgeous. Keeps your eye on the dinosaur and on Jess. And it's fun to fail here when she she gets snapped up by the T-Rex. <laughs> so remember when we were kind of initially talking about designing some of these puzzles involving the T-Rex, there was a lot of it where it's just like, okay, and then you don't move, so you don't yeah. get seen. And <laughs> right. Eventually, like, well, how do you turn not doing anything into gameplay? We went through a few iterations uh, on how we get a scheme for that you can't make a video game without having a crate in it no, <laughs> no that's all special crate sequence get them crate, get them all right we just don't have enough this I, uh, yeah it was so great so when I saw nice. it come in yeah I, like, I remember when we were doing this animations I asked if we needed to show the T-Rex getting up because I think it's physically impossible for the T-Rex <laughs> to get up from that. Just pushes himself up with his little hands. But the way we show it is, is perfect, how his head just comes rearing up. <laughs> I also love, <laughs> Here, have a needle. <laughs> I also love the uh, T-Rex dance that you uh, idle loop that you did for the T-Rex. Oh, yeah, the T-Rex in the background at one point. We just needed to see his feet in the shot, so we did a loop of the T-Rex doing Waltzing, like a basically. square step or something. It was like a waltz, pretty much. But it looked quite silly when you looked at his entire body. See, Jerry's still not quite... Like he's a little stiff, but... By the end of the series, I'm right I'm stuck. I like the option of uh, bad parent on this one. I think I, w- I wish we'd put statistics on this because I'd like to see how There's many people choose the. Uh, there is an achievement for bad don't parenting, but I, I feel like, oh wow, this is the first time I've ever seen somebody not <laughs> click. Don't be stupid. <laughs> right, listen to me, honey. I'm gonna count to three. Don't be stupid. I Everyone that. chooses that. <laughs> it's like she's hanging there. And then I think I had many people in the office tell me that this moment right here really caught them off guard and made them super impressed. How Jerry doesn't get seriously injured there, I don't know. <laughs> He's got a little knee in him. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he have titanium oh, skeletons. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> T-Rex is sassy there. Man, that's gonna hurt. This is one of these. Uh, that's why he's out of it for a yeah, few he minutes. Is. He, he takes a bit to recover. <laughs> Sorry to say that th- this is one of these last minute things where we just wanted to have a little tiny bit more gameplay in the sequence. So this was all added later. Yeah, we added the uh, all the Jess stuff. Um, yeah, because originally he just grabbed the gun. And, and originally, it. when Jerry stood up, he would have had a choice to go up to the T Rex mm-hmm. or just go back to the gun. Right. That's one of those situations where we're just thinking like... But everybody really liked the T-Rex interactions. We just decided to make everybody have to do that. Well, and also, like, giving you a choice meant that you didn't get to experience one of them. Uh, So... um, So we just said, well, let's just experience both. (laughs) And this was Joe's favorite part. I gotta say, when I first programmed this sequence, I didn't have, there were no animations or anything in, and I I could already tell that to be super exciting. That was really difficult to try and figure out how the animations for that were gonna work. That is is a dramatic part. (laughs) I love that the, uh, I kind of wish we had, did we not have the darts 
sticking out of the T-Rex. Oh, no, there they, they, they are. are. No, I mean, they're like, from in the other episodes. Yeah. Yeah, they like, were taking them off wish, by then. I would kind of wish that they'd stayed on. Like, yeah, I was hoping that, too. He's just kind of like, oh. I love this phone conversation. Or she, sorry. <laughs> it's just like... I like the nothing forget it option. I really, I really, oh, yeah. And I really think the use of the Hi, car here as the, as the way to end the sequence was really, really good. So perfect for everything that was set up and available. That moment. I don't, I don't know how well this reads to the player, but the T Rex is supposed to be a little drunk here <laughs> because like, all of the all the uh, yes, trank darts. Tranquilized. Uh, oh yeah, I didn't even notice. That's true. Yeah, yeah. 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 crossing Bro, his feet. I can drive. Yeah. The keys. <laughs> you. How long has it been? We found you last night. We sort of, like, ran you into you. giant there. Maldita sea. So, who is Mariquita? Mariquita? It's, it's nobody. A word. Oh, my Spanish is so lame. I really I hope that the moment you in the car, and it's like, I thought surprise. you were going to kill me because my grammar sucks. We're recording this so, before um, the game has come what out. What did we talk about? Help's on the way. The control room is a mess, but the phones are working. Hey. You look a whole lot better. Hey, One of the, um, on the way. important characteristics of the uh, rescue team. Nika the helicopter will be here. Does uh, the voice of Nima mainland. was um, we'll get you that she was a, that she was you know instead of a able to play the part, but also speak team. Spanish. And uh, I think she did a pretty good job. She needed a little bit of coaching, but uh, it's right here. Like she wasn't someone who natively spoke Spanish, but she could definitely nail the accent. That bite on your arm. Oh, some Daniel Herrera coaching. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's fun. Jungle. Take it slow. Start from the beginning. So sad. I'm sorry, but I can't tell you that. Such a dad. You know what? Okay. Time for this. Whoa, whoa! Take this it to easy. me did feel like Don't the push end yourself. of a. Won't be a good clipping of like a TV show or something episodic, where mm -hmm. it's like you would you would see this on the end Not of Lost or something. So, that wraps it up. Um.